Um, something I've been sort of wondering about and looking at my own life is my relationship to need. Um, and we're reading God's generals at the moment and seeing lots of these amazing people of God um, that completely, you know, do these crazy days of ministry almost and love other people at the expense of themselves and fall apart. Um, and I was on your Facebook wall the other day and... Um, and, and somebody I was in a bad mood no, one no, day no, last no, week, so I, I hope it wasn't um, that day you were on there. No, no, it was a good one. Someone oh, okay, had, okay. Um, asked you to speak at their church. Oh. And you said, um, which just really struck a chord me because it's something I'm thinking about, um, I get three to 400 uh, you know, requests a year. Oh, yeah. And I say only yes to 25 to 35. Um, and I know the right answer is, you know, we'd say yes just when the Holy Spirit tells us and all that, you know, when we only do the thing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I was just wondering if you could... Tell us a little bit about your process of how you steward yourself and your values and your time in relationship to many, many people coming to you. Does that make sense? It does. It's probably not nearly as spiritual as you want to hear, though. Okay. Um, so I get, I get lots of imitations every day, and I can't go to, you know, like you said, I can go to 10% of them probably. And I'm so busy... I can't figure out the 30 I'm supposed to go to out of the three or 400 I get. So I can't even do that. I can't even like, well, here's your 10 invitations you got today. Uh, okay, that's overwhelming to me. So I have to develop core values for my team. And I have to say, listen, as a general statement, these are the places I'll go. These are the places I won't go. And so I, I generally say, listen, I'm not going to go to any, I'm going to maximize my time because I can stay here and speak to, you know, 1,600 students a week, twice a week. So if I'm going to travel, it needs to be purposeful. Like there needs to be a reason why I'm actually leaving a place where I'm, where I'm speaking to the most amazing people on the planet. And I sp my whole... I'm, I'm not actually not being flattering. I'm actually saying I can stay here and build. I don't need to go anywhere. I can stay here every week and feel like I am doing something that is changing the world right here. And this is honestly, besides my family, my, my, you know, my natural family, this is the most important thing I'm doing. So something has to take me out of here. So that's the way I look at it. Like so, there has to be a reason why I leave here. And, so, and, I, and I, we do podcasts so people get our preaching. So I'm like, okay, so I need a reason why I would leave here. So I've set up core values for my team and I said, okay, these are the invitations I'll take. First of all, I'm not going to go any place with 100 people. Unless God tells me to, like, unless there's an exception. So I have a go light, and, and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go to places where I can maximize my time. So if, you know, if there's a church of 100 people, to be honest, I'm probably not going to go there. Bill has a different core value than I do, but I, I'm probably not going to go there. And um, so what I do is we have um, all of our invitations go on a map that, on this computer, and I go, oh, I got 15 invitations within a 50-mile radius. So why don't you find the person that's the catalyst among those churches, if there's a catalyst with four or five of those churches, and I'll go there and have them all come to one place. And then one of the things that's one of my core values is, can I meet with the leaders? There's a very slim chance I'm going to go someplace that I can't meet with the leaders, unless it's like D.C. or there's some spe specific thing I'm doing. But otherwise, if I can't meet with the leaders, in a, and I'm talking about not just like say hi to them, but if I can't have some significant time with leadership, I probably don't want to go. Because for me, I'd rather speak to 50 leaders than 1,000 people. Because if I can influence those 50 leaders, I can influence 10,000 people. So those are some of my core values. And uh, actually, Beth and Todd pray over all of those. They pray over every invitation. And probably every other month, they're like, I really feel like you're supposed to consider this. Like, this doesn't fit your core values, except for I felt like when I was praying over them, I really felt like you're supposed to consider coming here. I don't take every one of those, but I'm like, I'll consider it. I'm like, okay, but I'll pray over it. I'm like, yeah, maybe we should go there. Why don't you see if they can do something in a larger venue or if, I, if they can gather more leaders? Because either one's fine with me. Like, give me more people or give me people that are, have a, a larger impact. Those are some of my values. And then the other thing is, I, I, the other places I go, or one of my criteria, or one of the ways I, one of the, one of the criteria I try to have is, am I a father to these people? So the one thing I don't do anymore is just go someplace to speak. 
I, I don't actually need more places to speak. So, you know, when you first start, you're just like, hey, you know, Joe has a home group, and he's got 12 people, and he'd like you just come and share. Awesome. That's awesome. I'll do anything. And I did that for, you know, 15 years. And I, and I just love to speak. But now I'm like, you know, I can speak at home four times a week, so I don't really need to go anywhere to speak. And maybe I could say in a practical way, like, you know, that, that itch is scratched, you know. So I'm not going to go some, if I scratch the itch or... It's all okay? It's all good? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, um, Trisha wanted me to say that I didn't start there. Like, I just want to be clear. Like, I think it is important. Like, I didn't start there. Like, I preached in campgrounds. I probably told you this. I preached in convalescent hospital campgrounds and in uh, probation, you know, with kids on probation for five years, two days a week. I, I preached in the convalescent hospital for five years every Sunday morning for five years. I preached in the campground every summer for about six or seven years. I preached in home group for 17 years every week. I had a youth group that I preached to every week for 14 years. So, you know, I mean, I know what it is to sit with three people. My, my youth group was three people, and two of them were forced to go there. Two of them were Bill Derryberry's son and daughter. <laughs> that was my youth group for about six months. It's like, all right, all three of them came. We got 100% attendance. And then I told you this. I met with Bill, and Bill said to me, if you prepare like you're preaching to a 1,000, when you have the three, someday you'll get to preach to a 1,000. 